What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we are checking out the new Samsung Galaxy A15 5G. Now, I actually think this is the phone that almost everyone has been waiting for. It's of course the successor to last year's A14 5G, which together with the regular A14 was the best selling phone worldwide. And oh yeah, the year before that, the A13 was a bestseller too. If you're somehow not familiar, Samsung's A series is their lineup of budget and mid range devices, and this phone is sort of one pip up from their cheapest option. On the surface, this is a phone intended for folks who need a decent, reliable smartphone with some solid core specs and a familiar feel with the Samsung Touch. And for this year, Samsung brought some upgrades and improvements to the A15 5G that once again make this one heck of a buy for just just under 200 bucks. And something tells me this new A15 5G might just top the charts yet again as one of the best selling smartphones for 2024. There is a lot to talk about with this phone. I'm of course going to go over everything that's new and upgraded versus last year, and I'll fill you in on everything else you need to know. I'll also talk about the best places to buy the new A15 5G since it's the sort of device that you can get at a steep discount if you know where to look. But first things first, let's just quickly unbox it and I'll show you the couple of things that come included if you buy one. So slicing into that top sticker there and pulling out the box, the first thing you're greeted by is the Samsung logo stamped on the outside of a thin packet of stuff. And you get the usual array of accessories here, a stack of paperwork, a USB-C to USB-C cable for charging, and that's about it. Underneath that stuff, you'll find the phone itself shrouded in a new kind of wrapping that I've actually never seen Samsung use before. It feels like a dryer sheet. And the only other thing you'll find affixed to the bottom of the box is a SIM ejector tool, and that is everything that's included with this phone. With that junk out of the way, here is the new A15 5G once again. You'll see I was lucky enough to get mine in the new light blue colorway, which just looks awesome. It has this color shifting effect based on how the light shines on it. You can also snag it in black, yellow, or a slightly darker shade of blue. And as far as pricing and availability, the full retail price of the A15 5G, at least here in the US, is $199 dollars unlocked directly from Samsung. Now, Amazon right now actually already has this phone listed at a discount, and you'll more than likely see the A15 5G offered by some or all the major carriers and prepaid networks. This is the sort of phone they like to give out for free when you sign a new contract. T-Mobile, for example, lists this phone for $0 down, $0 a month, and it's free on their prepaid subsidiary Metro as well with a new line discount. No matter where you buy this phone from, you shouldn't pay more than $200. And at that price, I feel like it's going to be the perfect sort of budget phone for a lot of people, certainly far from the four-figure price tag of today's flagships. And if you want to do some comparison shopping of your own for this phone, I'll leave some links down below in the video description to where you can snag your own A15 5G at its cheapest current price. So I wouldn't blame you if you thought this new A15 5G kind of looks exactly like last year's A14 5G, but actually there's a few sort of superficial but still noteworthy changes that I'll just quickly point out. The A15 5G is technically smaller than the A14 5G in more ways than one. The actual screen size has shrunk down. It's 6.5 inches corner to corner instead of 6.6, .6, but it has a better screen to body ratio now, about 84%, which I realize still isn't great. I mean, you have the bigger than average bottom chip and thicker black borders framing everything with the old school selfie camera notch up top, but arguably the overall design is streamlined just ever so slightly. And in the hand, not only do those smaller dimensions help with having your thumb reach all the way across the screen, but the phone is a tiny bit lighter as well, so it should be more comfortable to use one-handed. Around back, the A15 carries on that refreshed design that mimics Samsung's higher-end flagship phones. Like I mentioned, this phone rocks just 
an awesome color shift finish that looks better in person, I think, and sort of relies on how the light hits it. The more extreme the variation in light source, like the bright sun versus a dark shadow, the brighter the different colors will be and the more you'll notice the shift. But funky finish aside, this is still a budget phone with a budget build. Plastic from top to bottom and no new or noteworthy Gorilla Glass covering the front either. The phone still feels decent though. It's a sharp, flat phone with a nice profile. The sides are a matte finish. Just be sure to peel off those glossy stickers that are pre-installed there. Overall, to me, this is a really nice looking phone with just enough minor changes to feel not only somewhat new, but a bit more modern as well. Taking a look around on the left side, you'll find a dual SIM and SD card tray. So you have one dedicated SIM slot, and then the secondary slot is either for a secondary SIM or a micro SD card. There's no eSIM support on this phone, so you sort of have to choose between that second SIM or the micro SD card for extra storage. The phone can be configured with either 128 or 256 gigabytes of built-in storage, which actually is a lot for this phone in this price range, and twice as much as last year. But having the option still to pop in a $20 micro SD card and double or triple the storage capacity is always at least nice to have. On the right side, there's very familiar volume and power buttons. The power button is also your fingerprint sensor, and I'm sure this is basically the same old finger print sensor technology that has graced a lot of these budget and mid-tier Samsung phones in recent years. It's not the fastest at unlocking, but it's accurate and convenient enough, and I'm glad it's still here. At the bottom, some of you will be relieved to see that there is still a headphone jack alongside the USB-C port and one single speaker for out loud listening. There's no secondary speaker in the earpiece, unfortunately, and around back, a triple lens camera setup, which has also changed just slightly. So I actually think the biggest change with the A15 5G this year is with the display. And not just because of the little size alteration that I mentioned earlier, this phone actually does get a whole new screen. The 6.5 inch display is now a Super AMOLED 90 hertz display, still 1080 resolution, and now with 800 nits of max brightness. This is a big upgrade from the LCD displays of the previous A14s and A13s, and it's something I noticed right away when I picked this phone up. You just get a bolder, more colorful, more saturated looking screen, and whatever you're watching is gonna pop a lot more with more vibrancy and more colors in general that'll get displayed. AMOLED is absolutely the way to go, and this actually is a somewhat premium display, something you'd expect to see on a $300 or $400 phone at least, and paired with a higher peak brightness, the dim, glare-prone screens you'd normally be stuck with on a phone like this is no more. Everything just looks better. And this is also where I see even more value in the A15 5G as a whole. Of course, it's also still a 1080 resolution display. So with this big size, you aren't gonna be picking out any pixels at all. There's some 396 pixels per inch crammed within this screen. So everything looks plenty sharp, even up close. And it's also a 90 Hertz panel, the cherry on top which makes your taps, touches, swipes, and scrolls look and feel super fluid. I've constantly complained about the less than stellar LCD displays on previous budget Samsung phones, and I'm glad Samsung seems to have listened. If you need just one single reason to upgrade to this A15 5G this year, the display is certainly it. And if you're maybe coming from a different budget phone, something from Motorola, for example, this new A15 5G is definitely something you should consider too, instead solely for the screen itself. The only bummer here is that when you're listening to your content out loud through the single bottom speaker, it's sort of a subpar setup. I mean, adding decent dual speakers on this phone couldn't possibly have been that expensive, but alas, it didn't make the cut. And here's a sound sample of that single bottom speaker so you can hear it for yourself. When it comes to specs, performance, and the software experience, 
I honestly feel like Samsung took more of a sidestep here than anything else, so let me explain. Powering the new A15 5G is a newer MediaTek Dimensity 6100 Plus chipset, arguably a fresher SoC than the four-year-old Dimensity 700 from last year, and probably better appreciated than Samsung's own Exynos hardware as well. But with the option of either four, six, or eight gigabytes of RAM, those combined components don't produce any more measurable power, at least not anything you'd notice in day-to-day -day use. Here are the Geekbench scores if you want to compare this phone to what you currently have. In playing around with this thing the last few hours, to me, it feels fine enough just jumping from app to app and doing your average sort of stuff texting, web browsing, YouTube video watching. It's a little clunky from time to time, but honestly, the more apps I launched, it pretty much continued to perform the same and even kept most everything current and running in the background. On top of just its decent overall performance, some of you might be relieved to see that this phone is upgraded to Android 14 and One UI 6.0, seemingly the full version of One UI at that as well, not One UI core like last year. There might be a couple of random Samsung or Android bits that this phone still doesn't have since it is a budget device, but generally speaking, this is the full-fledged, full-featured Android and Samsung experience you'd expect to get, the cheapest phone to offer that software support, and something a lot of people will be relieved to hear. That means that not only is this phone a decent deal now, considering its fairly friendly performance, but you can ensure that it'll stay current and up to date for years to come, making it a decent sort of long-term investment in a way. I'm excited to continue testing this phone in the coming weeks and seeing what it can handle for my full review, but collectively, this phone to me feels like the sort of budget phone that just ups the level of overall value for price when you factor in not just its decent specs and full software experience, but the multiple years of updates now as well. Powering this phone is, once again, one of Samsung's largest batteries. It has a 5,000 milliamp capacity inside, and I have no doubt that this is a full day and then some sort of device when it comes to longevity. On top of lasting long, you can also charge it faster now too. The A15 5G's wired charging speeds have been bumped up to 25 watts, but you still need to provide that charger yourself. Besides that, this phone still lacks the other power features, like wireless charging, that continue to be reserved for the higher-end devices. Finally, around back, the A15 5G has three different camera lenses, the same number as last year, but with some pretty important changes to the actual hardware. The main lens seems to be all the same, a 50 megapixel f1.8 aperture shooter. The secondary lens, however, is now an ultra-wide, something I've been begging for for years. And the third lens is the same macro shooter as before, intended for up-close pictures. The selfie camera up front seems to be unchanged, it's still a 13 megapixel lens. And inside the camera app, while there's not much that's been upgraded or altered here, the new wide-angle lens certainly adds some functionality and practicality in everyday shooting. It's the lens I find myself using most often, even more than say the zoom or portrait mode or almost anything else. There's also still the 50 megapixel picture mode for capturing extra detailed shots and enhanced video stabilization for video recording, of course. There's enough here to be happy about, plenty of other modes and functions too, but a couple of things like 4K video recording still haven't made it to this phone yet. But to me, ditching the depth sensor and adding the ultra wide lens is good enough by itself. On top of that, I think with the new software and new processor, your actual images and videos should generally look better as well. Not everything is perfect though. The portrait selfie totally missed a good chunk of my hair in this example. The results are still far from flagship caliper, but they're quite a few steps above a lot of the other budget phones on the market, and I'm interested to see how this phone stacks up when I start snapping some more pictures from my full review, so definitely stay tuned for that. To me, the A15 5G received just enough enough big changes this year to dub this a must upgrade if you have last year's A14 the A13, or maybe even some other budget or mid-tier device. The screen alone is a big enough change. Adding a Super AMOLED display on a $200 device just increases that value proposition even more. The wide-angle camera lens is a great addition too. The newer specs are going to help power this phone a bit better as well. 
I can absolutely see why this subset of A-series phones is not just a top seller for Samsung, but a bestseller across the entire smartphone market year after year. For 200 bucks, I certainly feel like this is going to be the phone to get this year. And chances are with all those carrier deals, you probably won't even pay that much for it anyway. But what do you guys think about the new A15 5G? Let me know in the comments down below, especially if you already have this phone. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.